Hello and welcome to a new video about rotary current, three-phase AC we are talking about. Well, last time we had a little look what three-phase AC is anyway, so we are here now and we will I will briefly explain it once again. So we have actually three phases yeah, with three voltages and all those three voltages are the same from the, from the amplitude, uh, from the effective value and, and uh, however they are shifted, timely shifted, always 120 degree. Okay, so U2 is 120 degree behind U1 and U3 is 120 degree behind U2 and then already there's already the next wave of U1, I said. And well, that's the base and we can also use the voltage between two phases. Yeah? So this is from one voltage is a phase voltage and the voltage between two of those phases is called line voltage and this line voltage I can find here, it's U1 minus U2 and it would like look like that, it's a little bit bigger, all right? And I also said, if these currents, if they are leveling each other and so on, I don't really need here three back lines, I only need one back line and if they are exactly leveled, I need no neutral line. Yeah? And now this looks a little bit complicated, let's say. However, uh, we will have a look at the computer, how this turns out, yeah? how the sine waves and so on uh, are looking like. Uh, we will have a prepared a spreadsheet, yeah? we'll have a look there. Alright, so at the computer, I made a spreadsheet. Ah, I like spreadsheets and here is my spreadsheet and what is it showing? Uh, this is what it's showing. Here we have the pointer diagram, right now I only have uh, put in U1, yeah, so the, the voltage at phase 1, and this is the timely voltage, this is how it would look like in time. Yeah? This is the pointer diagram, it's in the real axis, so we start at zero with our sine wave, and that's our sine wave, and I put it like that, that we have 20 milliseconds uh, duration period, uh, period duration, so this means 50 hertz. This is what usually we have in our power system in Europe. Okay, 230 volts, effective value, uh, and, and 50 hertz. This is one phase voltage. So this is U1, and let's have a look how U2 would look like. This is how U2 looks like. We have 120 degree, we are behind 120 degree. Yeah? What would it look like in the time diagram? Let's have a look. This is how it looks in the time diagram. We are one third of our duration of our period, uh, we are behind. Yeah? So we are here at zero and here the next wave, U2 is starting and we are one third of 20 milliseconds behind. Uh, because a full period, 20 milliseconds and 50 hertz and here we have a third and we are third of a full circle behind, 120 degrees. Yeah. This is how this fits together. Right. So let's also watch the, the currents. Yeah. Here's one current, I have used a specific load here. Yeah. So this is I1. So this is a little bit behind. Yeah. So we have, uh, we have inductive behavior, a yeah. little bit behind. Let's look how this is looking here. All right, it's smaller, we are a little bit behind. Yeah. This angle here, this phase angle here, reflects in a time delay here. Yeah. And we see the swing is a little bit later. This is why this pointer diagram, this pointer of the current is a little bit later. All right, let's also have a look at you, I2. Yeah. I use the same impedances in every phase right now. Uh, so I2 is looking absolutely exactly like I1, but absolutely exactly behind U2. Right? So U1 is producing I1, U2 is producing I2. Uh, and let's have a look how I3, uh, U3 is, is looking. We are again 130 degree behind. 
Let's have a look here, U3. We are again 130, and now it looks like we filled the whole gap. Now there's no gap anymore. Once, one swing, second swing, third swing, first swing, second swing, third swing, and so on. Tuk, 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 tuk. Every, so every third, there's everywhere. Yeah? And of course, it's no secret to you, I guess, that the third, the third current is also looking the same. Since I said I've used the same impedances, the same resistances uh, everywhere, this is how this looks. Right? And how would it look like if we are now using the line voltage? So these are the phase voltages, 230 volts. Uh, and, and the line voltage, I said, we can find here. All right? Here from U2 to U1, here is the line voltage U1 to, uh, between U1 and U2. If I say U1 minus U2, this is what we get. Uh, however, of course, it does not look that way. This is, I said last time, here, you can find it here. Yeah, you can find it here. However, of course, the arrow is starting in the zero, zero point. Yeah? So this is the arrow, how it would look like. Here, you can construct it, and then you have to parallel shift it to here, that it starts here, and this is how it points, all right? So we are 30 degree before U1. Yeah? and much bigger. Let's see how this looks like in the time diagram. That's it. Yeah. So again, uh, really, we are 20, uh, 30 degree, 30 degree in front of, yeah, in front of the peak. Yeah, you see the two peaks here? Yeah. So this is why this is in front of, because they're turning counterclockwise, in front of you one. Yeah. And, well, it's much higher indeed. Let's see if this can get, be correct, if this really can be the, the uh, difference. Well, let's take this point. Here we have zero at U1 and minus whatever, minus 281 at U2. So I would end up at zero minus minus 281 at plus 281. And see, here we are at plus 281. This fits, this point fits, at least this point fits. Let's have a look here. Here U2 is zero, yeah? So U1 minus U2 must be U1. And indeed, here we have U1, yeah? So we are exactly at U1. Here U1 is zero, so we must be exactly at U2, and so on. So this is indeed how it looks like, yeah? So we have, again, the difference between two sine swings is a sine swing. And in this case, it's with a bigger amplitude. All right, so this is, this is how in time diagram U12 look, should look like. Let's have a look at U23. Yeah? U23 we will find here. We make a parallel shift of this U23. So it's pointing directly down. So we are 90 degree behind U1. Let's see how this looks like here. Let's see, oh, we are exactly 90 degrees. Yes, we, we are here at zero, and here we are at the maximum. We are 90 degrees behind, and it's equally high than this U12. Okay. And now let's bring in the last one, U31, from here to here, shift it to the origin from here to here, same length, same orientation. How does it look in time diagram? Like that. <laughs> yeah, this time diagram is really giving a great overview how a, a rotary system, a 3-3 AC system looks like. Yeah. At a glance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last time I said, oh, this is already looking pretty complicated, the pointer diagram. Yeah? Let's bring out only the construction lines, zack, 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 away with them. These are the voltages in the pointer diagram, these are the voltages in time diagram. Pointer diagram is a great tool. Yeah? So it's much, much, you get much more of you in this. 
But you should have seen how this looks like, so that's how it looks like. Let's bring out again these, these uh, line voltages. I really don't want the line voltages to show because I want to show you uh, also what is happening with our neutral line. So actually we think now of uh, we are using only only uh, the phase voltages uh, connect everything in a neutral line and the neutral line uh, is carrying is carrying current uh, can carry current right now I now added the neutral line current you see since we have a symmetrical load so every every load is the same the neutral line current is now zero. Yeah? All the red sine waves summed up to zero. Yeah? Now we'll change a little bit. Let's go to 250 in the first phase. I will change the first phase. Uh, I have added now more reactants. Yeah? And we see since we have more, more uh, resistance, we see it's getting a little bit smaller as you want, uh, I want. I one is getting smaller, you want to stay the same. I one is getting smaller, the other two, you're not affected. Yeah? And now the sum of all three, because one is getting smaller and it's also getting a little bit delayed, the phase is it's now a little bit later. Yeah? It cannot it cannot level. The three are not leveled anymore. And this is why we have this thin red sine wave now. This is the neutral current. In pointer diagram, if I had this and this and this, I would end up here. Here we see the neutral line, and the neutral current is a small error, uh, almost 180 degrees behind U1. And this is also true, because when this is going down, this is going up, so we're almost 180 degrees behind. Yeah, so there's, let's make it a little bit smaller, let's make 50. Yeah? Let's make 25. Or, uh, then we are bigger. Uh, our U1 is bigger. Since I've only reduced the reactance, the angle, the phase angle, V1, is getting smaller. So the time delay in U1 and I1 is getting smaller. And we see now that the neutral current has a totally different phase angle, yeah, totally different, and uh, it's much bigger. This is how a neutral, neutral current, neutral line current is somehow generated by the other current. If the neutral point is corrected, the star point is connected, uh, and we have a neutral line, then it's looking like this. Yeah? I will again go to symmetrical load. Now everything is balanced and, and, and leveled again. All right. So now we know how a rotary system looks like in three-phase AC system looks like in, in time diagram. Well, pretty nice, I would say. Looking somehow nice, very technical, yeah? <laughs> a little bit complicated. It's not really that complicated as it looks, yeah? but well, yeah. we have seen phase voltages, we have seen line voltages, uh, and the currents, and what is happening if we have asymmetrical loads with the neutral line current and so on. Uh, Next time, next time we are going to talk about, now we know exactly what it is, next time we are going to talk about how it is produced, our three-phase AC. Yeah? How we are generating three-phase AC. Next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.